As cold weather sets in across the Midwest, Adam heads north and Heath and Lindsay head west. Both of them bring home some venison. Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Muddy Outdoors, Non-Typical Wildlife Solution, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester, Redneck Hunting Blind, Dead Downwind, Antler Dirt, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Master, Blood Sport Arrows, and Prime Bows by G5. Heath and Lindsay Martin from Arkansas are one of our pro staff team. They've shared some great hunts with us in the past. We caught him in the act. That right there is why we're getting rid of him. During November, he showed us all how to get it done as he had a great self-filmed hunt in northern Missouri. I was very impressed with his efforts to get that footage and tag that northern Missouri buck. More recently, Heath and Lindsay took a road trip to Kansas. A couple of days earlier, Heath had scouted the property from the edge, working his way in, and actually filmed some deer by a creek bottom. It looked like a good place to hang, so now they're back with a couple of muddies getting ready to hunt. We're on a new piece of ground, trying to figure it out. It's the first morning we've ever hunted it. It's always fun to pick up a new piece of property and try to figure out how to hunt it, so hopefully we're gonna see some deer. Not long after they're set up, Heath and Lindsay are in for a pleasant surprise as Kansas puts on a wildlife show. Lindsay laid down some cool footage of three young bucks that have apparently got back into a bachelor group. I really like the footage of them drinking from the icy edge creek and later crossing that very cold creek. Then they spotted some bobcats. As the younger cat moves off, listen closely as you can hear that older cat's drawn out growls. It's not long until they see a target of opportunity about 100 yards across the creek. The doe works her way across the creek and is finally in range of Heath's bow. Slow motion reveals a well-placed shot was avoided by this doe. Normally when this happens, that deer runs their next zip code. But this time, Heath was gonna get another shot. In less than three minutes, she's worked all the way back, actually coming closer than where she was standing during the first shot.
I've known and shot bows with Heath for years. I knew when that doe was coming back in, it wasn't gonna go well for her. Heath was using a G5 striker head and a blood sport arrow. And clearly, that combination zipped right through that shoulder. About the same time Heath and Lindsay were in Kansas, Adam had rode north to hunt northern Missouri. Let me tell you, it is quite the change to hunt in the Ozark Mountains and to head north and hunt in all that cropland. So the first afternoon, I climbed in the tree and couldn't wait to see what would show. About an hour later, I caught movement in the trees and it was the first deer of the afternoon. As they worked their way down the edge of the field closer to my position, and I'm filming them, they nudge a doe and she runs right out in front of me. with blood so it was slightly quartering too but that big T3 expandable head I'm not worried about her at all it's always a good sign when you see one glow and knock in the quiver somehow it all worked out I was able to get my bow and get the shot off had a great hit and it was a short blood trail to follow Cold days are not only good for hunting, they're also great for continuing to work on that predator-prey relationship. Trapping is not only a great way to balance the predator-prey relationship and work on the conservation model for your property, it's a wonderful way to introduce others to the great outdoors. New Year's Eve here at the Proven Grounds and out running the trap line this morning with my buddy Austin. Austin has some time off school and want to join me. We're just a few traps into it and we've got a raccoon right here in one of our Duke traps. Austin, what do you think about that? Well, it's nice to have a raccoon in one of these traps. Yeah, yeah, Austin's been sharing with me. He got a 223 for Christmas and gonna partake in Missouri's youth season here this weekend, but we're gonna get a little fur before youth season. So I'm gonna take care of this raccoon and show Austin how I set this Duke trap. Here, Austin, here's a little souvenir from today, if you want it. Of course, we've got a big spring coming out here. We're right by the road, so that's kind of two travel corridors coming together. And that's Unlike deer hunting, which often involves setting still and being quiet for hours at a time, trapping's full of energy, moving, looking, and seeing new sights. It's an ideal way to share creation and create that love for the outdoors into other generations. All right, buddy. Let's go down the road, see if we caught anything else. We're out here checking our traps, the 5th of January. As you can see, we got quite a bit of snow on the ground last night. 
Uh, snow's one thing. The problem we had was it rained a lot first and it iced over our sets. So what we're doing today is we're coming in, scraping off that top layer of ice and still snowing. I'm gonna put this calcium chloride down. Uh, to put this down, you do need your traps to be properly waxed or treated in some way because it will rust your traps. But this will keep that top layer from crushing back over if it does thaw on me. Uh, traps will still fire fine through the snow, but the ice is where you run into problems. So we're fixing to scrape all this ice and everything off and try to get these traps working again tonight. No big deal. We can deal with that. Whether you're out looking for sheds or working on balancing that predator-prey relationship, take a moment to enjoy creation and more importantly, take some time and listen to what the creator is saying to you. Thanks for watching GrowingDeer.tv. This is what happens when you try to run your trap line after a snowstorm in the Ozarks. Came about two inches from death, but Clint over there is a heck of a driver and maneuvered it into this life saving cedar. Here you go, take a look. You got the truck there, and about a 40 foot drop off into a ravine, but he saved it. Not a fun ride. Oh, heck no. Me and uh, Clint, we're gonna let things thaw out before we attempt to get anything out of here. Because I think we're running out of miracles. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, got the tractor chained up, rocks under the tires. Hopefully, she doesn't go nowhere. Uh, we're just gonna have to wait for some warm weather. So, let's get out of here.